of collaboration, yes. prosthetics to the designs. Um, how do you work together? What, what is the process that you tend to go through? Good. No, you start, and then I'm going to okay. chime in because so because it does start it does start on his his aspect. Yeah, I mean yes. it's it's a, it's it's has to be an incredibly distilled process because we're designing in LA, James is on set in Toronto uh, applying and we have to still deal with shipping and getting some things up there. So normally it goes very smoothly, but there has been issues where there were storms in the middle of an episode where boxes got stuck uh, in in like a FedEx facility in Nebraska or whatever. And and so you have to prepare for those eventualities, right? So it is a fine-tuned machine between, and when I say us or Alka, I'm talking about a group of 80 or 90 men and women that are handling all this. So just the shipping aspect alone is sort of its own art, making sure that everything is out and that when they unpack it, they know where everything is. So actually giving that the attention it deserves as professionals and, and highlighting how important it is that the stuff gets up there. A lot of times you'll see a departure between the studio that builds and designs versus their on-set team and it's sort of in a box and here you go and good luck. We're not there, not our problem. But knowing that being a team and knowing how many challenges they face in a day and how many things can change and trying to take as much off of their plate when they're unpacking boxes and getting ready to apply stuff and making it a smooth process is very important. Yes. How much of an input do you have from the makeup side to the design side and vice versa? Um, my, mine is just uh, if something maybe needs to be changed where I need uh, a makeup broken down a little bit more, maybe it, if it's a four-piece makeup, okay. let's add an, a lip, an, a side lip, which will stay on longer, uh, have her facial movements or his facial movements move better. Um, but we try to have these conversations in the testing period when I'm in LA before I go up, uh, those are the times best to do it then than later. But um, what is the balance between the people who obviously are canon and the people who are here? Do they get involved in the creative or are they just following the directions? There's, there's multi levels to it. So we start with the executives, and myself and Neville will start with just words. just. And, and this is one of the things that makes this show so incredible. You do not get this opportunity, right? So here, we're often episodes ahead. We started almost eight months out from when we were shooting. And we're working off of just spoken concepts, not even beatboarded, not even scripted. And we're being included, a very rare experience, and, and being allowed to participate in the concept on paper as it's written. Then we move that as we start to hone in on what episodes is going to land in, which characters, and male or female. So, for instance, with the Klingons, as we got closer and closer, uh, I created a cultural axioms document for all the great houses. And the, the concept behind that was, up till now, every house kind of looks the same. Why would that be? If you think about, on our planet, how many different cultures and how the cultural patina that gives our food, our architecture, our fashion, or jewelry, what would it be like in the Empire? They all grew up on different planets. They don't all grow up in Kronos. And they've been spacefaring for how long? Like, we're just this tiny new species, really. So we're trying to convey that with the Klingon, that each house very much has its own individual look, so much so that their skin, if you pay close attention, the, the delegates that we see in, episode, in season one, um, in 102 and then a few later, like Danas and Ujili. So you're seeing representatives of House Mokai and House Dagor. Their skin tones are actually different, just like us. So we, we, that's one of those things that started so long ago as, as just words and has played out as a main function of our, our an evolutionary imperative in our design. So Neville will do a lot of that digitally. We'll start with those conversations, he'll present all these ideas digitally and we'll look at various versions of it. And meanwhile, we'll be testing physical things, showing different skin tone samples before we even sculpted a clean We don't have our actors yet. So then they cast the actors and we are also very lucky on the show. They embrace the idea of try. It's a very inclusive, generous, open environment. They let us speak to our actors and we, we got a lot of input from Doug on Saru. We get a lot of input from Mary on Laurel. and. and um, with James working with Mary so closely, we've actually changed that makeup several times since we started to make it better with his input and Mary's input. Yeah. No. I can't even say anything. I can't even say anything. <laughs> but it's, it's sort of, that's how the process works. Digital to physical, but, you know, I mean, um, in 
new ways never before attempted in the prosthetic world because of a relationship with a company called 3D Systems. So if you look at the stock market, them and Stratasys are the two biggest companies in the world, 3D printing. We happen to benefit from the fact they're in Burbank down the street from us and that Neville is so heavily cutting edge involved in 3D design and printing that we get to work with 3DS. So 3DS is proving out how we can integrate technologies their best technologies into the film pipeline um, and thus we're getting it at a cost that would be preclusive to anyone else right now but won't be in the future and it's allowing us to try things that no one else has ever done. So for instance the Klingons, their heads, their occipital ridges and, and their throats, there's design detail. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible if you have a year to sculpt 16 of them, right? But we're getting that fidelity by taking some of Nev's d design directly, printing it, molding it, and pouring that in clay. So the sculptors find their character, each, my lead artist, in each Klingon's life cast, in their scripted character, but they can add these details. It would take months because we're doing them in the computer in a day, printing them out and adding that level, that tertiary fine detail level, to our sculptures using 3D print to clay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the place to do it, right? Last question. Thank you. Oh. Which, Which were the most difficult to realize? Um, a a ram is really yeah. tough, right? Why don't you speak to that? Just because it's hard surface, soft surface. Yeah, stuff. It's, it's mixing silicone with a hard surface, a 3D printed helmet, ears. Uh, did we get a test? No, I didn't. We did a test in Toronto, not here, so I got the, the pieces and trying to figure out how to get them to be perfectly lined up with each other so it doesn't look like we slipped a helmet on it. It's all one unit. Um, and that, I think, started out four and a half hours to do the makeup, and I think we got it down to two and a half. Yeah. It's just time after time after time. Like, Doug's makeup took three hours. I got it down to an hour and 45 minutes. The sure was very difficult, too, yeah. because just finding that character was probably the biggest journey for us as a creative yes. team. There's a whole separate version of him that almost made it to screen and changed very close to when we started shooting, and it looks nothing like the, the current version. And the, uh, one of the driving forces was when we saw that and all the awesome V effects on it, you, you lost Doug. And, and when you have a performer of that, that top-level creature suit performer, you, you, Doug, you need to let Doug act through the makeup. And yeah. so we went much more minimal and got Saru down to something that really facilitates Doug's performance and, and his ability to emote and create empathy more so than some giant makeup. You know? yeah. well, that's, that makes that very difficult when you're working for months on one angle and then suddenly you're doing something completely different. That, that's, a, that's a tough one. And he, he knows how to act underneath a prosthetic More cloud. than anyone in the yeah. world. Because yeah. you have to over overact to make that exterior piece move and if you don't know how to do that it's just going to be this non yeah